Why? 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 Good question. Why? You know, questions are never stupid. And on that, we would disagree. <laughs> there, there is such thing as a stupid question. You uh, obviously, A, have not been on a long car road with uh, <laughs> middle school boys. Long oh, car no. road, excuse me, with middle school boys. Or B, been in basic training. Oh, that's that. Those are good. Those are solid points. Those are there, solid there, points. There are some dumb questions out there. Ay, ay, ay. Well, welcome <laughs> everybody to the Triple J Trail Mix podcast. I'm so glad that you could come take a hike with us. Um, uh, let's try and you know dig into the bag and see if we can pull out some M and M's from this. Um, so, the yeah, they have, they are the best. Um, as a kid, I, I was the only part that I would eat. Honestly. True story. Uh, yeah. But uh yeah, welcome to our first AUA. Um I think on the the usual trend is an AMA, ask me anything, but it we are plural. We, we are Devin. Are and I'm... <laughs> um so yeah, we put posts out asking for really anything. Ask us literally anything. Usually the trend is, is about the person and their personal life but we wanted to branch out and just feed your hungry minds as best as we could um it's true. so yeah so what we're going to do is just we're going to ask a question and do our best to answer it come up with you know a variety of answers uh you you ready jt i uh, am ready when you are unfortunately our fellow Trail mixer nice. Jackie is unavailable tonight, um, so Drayton and I are flying solo, or as a duo. We're flying I, duo, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there we go. Tandem, we're flying tandem. There we go. Oh, there we go. That's it. Yeah, yeah. But I, I'm definitely driving the motorcycle, and you're in the sidecar. That's definitely how this is working. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Um, he told us to push on without him so here we are onward and upward we miss you jackie miss you shedding a little tear all right <clears throat> enough of that on to the questions all right so um well, we got a ton of them um i'm just gonna you know read them we uh you know if you ask this you know who you are um so just be listening and oh, well, uh, hopefully here, we please. satisfy you huh yeah, as I, as I real quick, let's let's kind of explain how we're going to be answering these questions. Okay, okay. Uh, I'm going I'm going to be ans asking a question. JT is going to come up with the best answer he can. I'm going to come up with the best best answer I can, and then we're going to actually find out what the real answer is. Yep. Yep. Okay. Let's do it. All right. So, uh, first question we have is why do earthworms come above ground? When it rains. You know, it's really funny that that question came up because it just rained up here like the last couple of days. And ah, so you are um, fresh with the earthworms. Yes, I have seen a ton of them. And it's always really interesting, like on like to, to get to the building that I work in from the parking lot. There's a, a fairly long sidewalk up to the door. Mm -hmm. um, every time after it rains. I mean, there are hundreds of earthworms spewing across that uh, sidewalk. Um, a lot of, most of them still alive, but a lot of them stepped on, and you know, the carnage of the the morning traffic. But I just, it is so fascinating to me that just like this uh, person was wondering, I've always wondered why. So, my best guess, best idea that I can come up with is um, they're just following the moisture. So, you know, the the earthworms in general, they live 
underground, they live where it's dark and wet, and they move around and crawl around, and um, when it rains, uh, the top part that is usually dry is now wet, um, and so they just kind of follow the moisture up and out, and then everything dries up, and then they're stuck out. That's good. That's that's pretty solid. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's that's actually nice. Um, um, uh, I have a different theory. Okay. Um, so, you know, um, underground it's pretty dark, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, they they get a few glimpses of light here and there, right? But I think what really fills the hole in every earthworm's life is uh, they really love to see rainbows. So every time after it rains, they all come up out of the ground to be able to witness this splendor and this this amazing phenomenon of photons and prisms and all that. Um, and it's it, it's kind of like the, the, the pilgrimage every earthworm has to make in his life. Um, so, you know, your, your life is complete as an earthworm when you, uh, make the, the trek up to the surface, um, uh, which, you know, from their perspective underground, it's kind of like heaven. So, you know, they, they go up to that level, they get to see the rainbow and then pray to God that they don't get squashed by all the amazing other creatures that are so much bigger than itself. So I think that's my answer for uh, why earthworms come up when it rains. Hmm. I like it. Yeah. Okay. No, um, enough. Enough with my BS. Let's uh <laughs> go to see what it's what's actually going on. So um, after a quick Google search, um, you were very, very, very close um, with it, JT. Okay. Um, it's actually, but the but the the movement is the opposite. Um, so uh, it says, after rain, the soil pours and the warm burrows fill with water. Oxygen diffuses about a thousand times slower through water than through air. Um, and it says the worms can't get enough oxygen when the soil is flooded, so they come to the surface to breathe. Interesting. Yeah. So I was close and you were not. Yeah. I mean, you know, <laughs> um, so yeah, that's interesting. I I never really thought about um, worms having. I mean, it makes sense, but it also just like it's mind blowing to think that they have lungs. Yeah, I mean, just to think thinking of. I mean, this is the anatomy of an earthworm. Mm -hmm. I mean, you just it's not something that you really think about, but like. That honestly kind of flips and it shows you just how awesome God is because there's a passage I can't I can't remember what chapter it is but um, it's in Job where God is talking to Job and he's basically like what what did he say he says like um, were you there when mm -hmm. the mount or are you there when the mountain goat gives birth. Like, yeah. no, <laughs> but he is, he designed that process. Like he made it and it's just kind of like that little, Hey, I am so much bigger and I am so much more awesome than you can even possibly imagine. Mm. It's amazing. Yeah. It's love, even kind of it, how you can, uh, um, uh, pull worship from earthworms, but there you go. Yeah. There you go. That's it. I mean, you know, Smallest of creatures are still precious in his sight. Story, true story. Um, there's All there's right. a there's a good deep question that um, is actually mainly meant for Jackie, so we will save that for then, um, for when he is with us. Um, but you are with us in spirit. spirit. Yes, he is with us in spirit. Oh. Um, <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to the next one. So, okay. uh, how do starfish eat? With their mouths. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Okay. <laughs> that, that actually brings up another, like, do they, actually, I didn't even think, do they have mouths? I've never, like, studied a starfish. I mean, I mean, I would imagine it is, it is fairly similar to, like, a, like a jellyfish. Um, like, so if I'm thinking of a starfish, on the bottom side, I think that, I think that they have a mouth on the middle, on, on the back of the, of the starfish. And they just kind of crawl around and suck up things into the the mouth, in the the hole that's back there, and uh, I don't know. I somehow sorts out between like I don't know what they eat. I don't know if it's like algae or little krill. Well, that's whales. But um, thanks Finding Nemo for teaching me that fact. Um, but yeah, that that. Uh, I would imagine it's something like that. Okay. I'm trying not to bust out laughing because I, I, I just Googled it in preparation. I cannot believe what I just read. Okay, well, forget what you just read. Forget what I just read. <laughs> Before, <laughs> Before what, what you just read, what, what is your initial theory? My, you my, initial, my initial thought was... Um, what I... What I... The... the, 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 the the idea that I had of a starfish's anatomy was that, you know, the, 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 the orifice, you know, in the middle of its body on the, on the bottom side, I guess. Right. Yeah. Was its butt. So I was thinking that it serves as kind of just a two way, you know, uh, digestion, um, poor, I guess. So I guess that they they eat, you know, with you know they eat through that it goes in and then they expel it. They defecate out back yeah, out of that same hole. I think that's um, what jellyfish do. Maybe. Um, yeah, and then the 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 analogy that I came up with was it reminded me of that time, one of the few Bear Grylls episodes that I watched. Where oh, no. he was stuck, <laughs> he was stuck on a raft in the middle of the ocean, and since the the since the ocean water was the only water that he could drink, and but it was too dirty to go through the mouth, he decided to siphon it through like a little piece of hose that he had, and to suck it up through his butthole. Um, so that was the image that I had. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that is something they didn't teach me about in a survival. <laughs> oh my gosh. We need oh. to have a whole discussion about just how accurate Bear Grylls is. Yeah, we need to. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> like, do they even reference him in formal education? <laughs> no, my word. <laughs> oh my gosh. Now yeah, that's the actual my... answer. Now, yeah, the actual um... answer is a little bit wilder than that. Actually, oh boy. Um, so it says they digest prey outside of their bodies by extruding their stomach out through their mouth and enveloping their meal. Once the food is digested, their stomach is drawn back into their body. Whoa, that's pretty freaking cool, man. I mean, that's that is not what I expected, but no, that's. That is Wow. That's that's something. Goodness <laughs> gracious. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. Yeah, that's uh okay. I I'm at a loss for words on that one. Yeah, same here. I I was wow. That um uh, those guys on YouTube definitely did not uh uh show us that one. You know what I'm talking about? Yep, yep. You want to see how animals eat their food? <laughs> <laughs> Starfish was not one of the animals. No, 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 no. Oh, goodness gracious. Um, okay, so. All right. Moving on. Moving um, on. Someone asks, what are your favorite and... what? No, sorry. What are your opinion and recommendations for non-medicine news sources? Ooh, that's a pretty, that's a nice question. Ooh, that's a good question. 
Oh, man. And truth be told, I'm not sure. Because yeah. pretty much every news source is, well, it, every news source is biased in some way. Mm -hmm. There are a lot, well, there are, I would say that there are a lot of reporters within news sources that try to portray it as unbiased as possible. Um, but like the way that I personally do news is I just kind of watch a little bit of everything, everything, CNN, Fox, local stations, New York Times, um, Washington Post. Uh, I, I try, I try to pay attention to kind of what everybody is saying and somewhere in the middle of all of it is where the truth is. Yeah. Is is kind of what I do. Nice. Um, I also listen to a lot of, um, I wouldn't say a lot, a handful of, uh, like talk talk show podcasts. Um, that they do a pretty good job at, uh, portraying decent news. Mm. Those I'm you a little that, more. I'm sorry. You said that was which one? So the one that I typically listen to is Dan Bongino. The mm, Dan okay. show. Um, his is way conservative um, and pretty pretty aggressive conservative. Um, so if you're not if you're not super aggressive conservative, I would not recommend that one. Um, but uh, anyways, so that's that's kind of what I do. Nice, nice. What about you? I would say if there's an if there's a certain topic or or issue, um, I'd say go to the new source of that particular country um, and, and also take it from the, the perspective of the majority um, so that you can get the, the most unfiltered, best, totally not biased uh, news sources that you can. <laughs> Sweet. That is, that is a total joke. Um, <laughs> um uh i have a i have a, a short list that i've um looked up i uh you remember this is this is part of the actual answer that i've kind of done well first first okay first what i what i usually do for myself is that i have i have two um news apps on my phone um that i get notifications from uh one is bbc and the other one is Al Jazeera. Oh, okay. So, so uh, those are the two biggest news stations outside of America. And so, because uh, BBC is based out of England, the UK, and Al Jazeera is based out of the Middle East. Um, so, uh, I think it's Saudi Arabia. I think, it, but I'm, I'm not sure about that. Um, but I usually, I don't, I don't. I try not to listen to news sources on in America because I just haven't been satisfied by any of them. <laughs> um, in in the case of being both unfiltered and uh, uh, objective, I guess as as possible. Um, BBC, because I, I mean, especially if the, if there's something happening in the U.S. I want to see what the rest of the world is seeing because they probably yes. see with clearer glasses than ours. Yeah, that's uh, actually. I just was thinking that if if you really want to know what's happening in the U.S., go see what our allies are saying about us. Yeah, exactly. Go see um, what you know, Canada and England and you know all those guys, um, mm -hmm. all their new news sources are saying about us. Yep, yeah. and uh, I also like to have both of them. In terms of when there's like clashes between you know the West and the East, mm -hmm. um, they they kind of take their you know they they have their own take on things. So they they sometimes they mention something that the other doesn't. Um, so especially with what's going on with um, you know the the current political climate, um, you know I've seen BBC take some. And some angles on on that, 
but then Al Jazeera has, you know, different ones. But they're all kind of, you know, still just reporting the same stuff, right? Right. That's been that's. I mean, again, for me personally, that's why I I, I kind of stay away from Fox News a, a few, a, you know, just a good bit because, well, and also a lot of other, um, uh, U.S. news sources because it seems like they they report the news, but then they have a whole chunk of time stretch out to hear other people's thoughts about it. And I'm like, I, I just want to know what's happening. I'll right. I'll develop my own thoughts by myself. Thank you very much. If it's if it's an expert in something, I'll probably I mean you know I'll I'll be more lenient to listen because I mean that that has merit. But if it's just babbling, then I'd I'd rather not. Yeah, too much too yeah. much news today is. Hey, here's a little bit of fact, and here's how we want you to feel and think about this fact. Yep, yep, yep. Which is just. Give me, give me what's happening. Give me the facts. Exactly. Um, but uh, so I, I've also looked up some places um, for you, dear listener. Um, so you remember that thing that happened with John Krasinski called "Some Good News"? Oh yeah, yeah. That was that was really good. I remember following all of that. Um, which I mean that that it's not. I don't think it's going. I don't think it's still going right now um yeah there's only like nine episodes it was it was it was during the quarantine and lockdown but right um but that was really good um which that actually sprang an idea another one that where i heard of this one website where it only has good news so like because you know if you also notice in the current news climate they only really do the big stories on like horrible stuff that's happening and that can get pretty discouraging so like you know they, they don't balance it enough i guess from in my opinion um so uh there's some news sources out there that only report good news so that's kind of like your you know other your other hand in the in the pie um and i can i can link some of these sources um in the description of this episode but some of them are like positive news squirrel news um i don't know if it's just news about squirrels but i mean that i would take that as well hey i'll um, take it i want to know yeah. what the squirrels are up to exactly they're and plotting. one of them it what i said they're definitely plotting to overthrow the current regime of course yeah the yeah. squirrel girl as their um nominee yep yep yeah yeah um uh, we are we are um outright supporters of the squirrel party um i mean yep. we're a little bit we're a little bit you know has a conflict of, not a conflict of interest but a, an alignment of interest because you know squirrels with acorns and nuts and we're you know a trail mix so you know we've got a little bit of a a lobbying situation going on with that um but just don't tell anybody uh so yeah just want to let you guys know yeah yeah i'm good with it um, another one is called uh, Not All News is Bad, a Daily Antidote to Everything Else. Um, Optimist Daily is another one. Uh, so, yeah, there's some there's some good uh, ones out there. But I mean, that's that's kind of, I guess, my take on your question, listener, of like, just that's my multiple takes on that. I think yeah. nonpartisan news sources would be just something that's. If you if by nonpartisan you mean something that's not overly conservative and one that's not overly liberal, then I would say, you know, do uh, look for news sources outside of the climate that you're trying to focus on. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, from the outside looking in, kind of thing. Yeah, uh, right, I like cool. it. Next question. Um, Okay, this one is a really good question, and we can we can spend a good time uh, trying to nail this one down. Okay, which is the best all around board or card game? Ooh, oh man, it's a good question. Oh, that is a good question. Cause like, there's so many. Yep. 
I mean, the the the. Okay, well, I never mind. I'm I'm gonna save my answer for the last. No, no, no. You you go right ahead. I mean, I yeah, this, is, this, is, this one doesn't have like a ultimate fact or truth that we're leading up to, so we can just discuss this. I mean, the the easy answer would be like it depends on what you're looking for. But right, dang, I don't. I, yeah, it's just it's hard to nail down because like the, some games, you know, are geared more towards whether you're wanting to like spend a few hours on this. Or whether you want to spend less than an hour. Yeah, because it's like, you know, I mean, you, you've you got games that are just quick and fun. You've got games that are, like, super in-depth. I mean, they're, they're a lot of fun, but it's more like, you know, you got to actually think about it to play. And you got to devote some time to it. Ooh. 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 Okay. All right, let's break it up into two. So let's break it into best one that you think that's just like a quick, easy to understand, just something that's like really fun. And then mm -hmm. um, on the flip side of that, something that takes longer, you have to think about it. Um, it's a more in-depth game you good with that mm -hmm. okay i i'd say um in respect to hard games i'd say uno either regular or spicy or um um slaps or i mean you know it's other names like ers or egyptian rat slap or egyptian rat screw or yeah. egyptian war yeah egyptian rat screw is what i know it as yeah um, those are my two go-to card games um, that are quick, easy, and fun. Um, and that they have, like, you know, simple rules. Like, they're not overly complicated. Right. I agree. I mean, to be fair, like, if you're coming in, if you're coming in for the first time playing Uno, it does take a bit to understand, especially with Spicy Uno, but... I mean, again, once you get it, then it's, I mean, it's it's easy to get. And then once you get it, it's good. Right. I would agree. Yeah. Um, then, for, um, oh, sorry. Um, yeah, for, come on, man. I got an answer. <laughs> go ahead. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, you're getting ahead of yourself, dude. So, oh. for me... Um, are you talking, so you're talking, okay, no, I got it. Um, I would go with, uh, it's actually a new game that, uh, Faith introduced me to, uh, called Quicks. Um, you and I, we, you, the four of us, we played it, um, mm -hmm. at Nathan's wedding. Yep, yep, yep. Um, for those that have never played it out there listening, um, it's, uh, kind of like Yahtzee, um, where you roll the dice, um, and you gotta count up, you know, there's different colors that do different things, and you gotta mark off your points on your card. Um, but it's pretty quick game, pretty easy to understand, and it's a lot of fun, actually. Yeah. Uh, go ahead and spell it for our listeners. Oh, yeah. Um, it is Q-W-I-X-X. -X. Nice. So, that's, yeah, quicks. The most extreme version of alternative spelling. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Quicks. Nice. Um, I was also going to say, I was kind of like distinguishing between card games and board games. Card games are what I listed. Board game, um, a good, quick, and easy one would be Aggravation. Have you played that? I don't think so. It's an old game. Um, I grew up playing it because we had it at my grandma's house um it's kind of like it's kind of like uh um sorry okay that's it's either, it's either that or i was this other this is another game that i can't think of the name of but um it's where you know you have a certain number of pieces and you have them in a in a, like a home base and you have to roll a six or a one to get them out and then from there you move 
them around the board and try to get them around all the way like completely in a circle then you can move them up into the safe zone which is where you want to get all your pieces um but if you land if the number of spaces that you're moving lands where another person's piece is and that knocks that their piece back to their home and they have to try and get it back out okay okay yeah it's it's pretty it's pretty simple and it's just a good you know it's a good game to have fun you know and hang out while you're playing it it doesn't take all your mental capacity hmm okay cool yeah 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 i got you um yeah i guess like a simple board game um Man, I'd almost have to go with either... I'd probably have to go with Ticket to Ride. Ooh, that's a good one. That's I think that's... It's a fairly simple game to understand. You're basically just building your train across the board. And it's mm-hmm. a lot of fun. It's it's a lot of fun to play. Yeah, it is. Okay. I was I was completely a newbie of, of that game until um, until I was with Joy. And she introduced it to me. And she's a boss at it. She will whoop anybody's tail. <laughs> uh, but I am I'm I am learning. The grasshopper is learning the ways. And okay. I have, I have beat her a few times. So I, I feel very proud. Good man. She probably let you win, but you know. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but now, okay. All right. Okay. So what about something that's uh, a lot more in depth? I've got I've already got my two top choices. They're games that I've newly. They're probably the newest games that I've learned of this type, um, compared to everything else. Um, which my two would be, uh, uh, what is it? The Murder on the House on the Hill. I think that's what it is. Betrayal. Huh? Alone House on the Hill. So what? Betrayal. Betrayal. Betrayal, that's what it was. Betrayal at House Betrayal on the Hill. At House on the Hill. And, yeah, and then uh, Villainous. Ah, Villainous. So much fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those two games are great. I love them. They are very in-depth with their rules and their play styles. Um, but I, I love that about them. And I love how in-depth and how much detail goes into all of it? That's what I really enjoy. Absolutely, oh, both of those are so good. Yeah. Um, I, my mind went to uh, Sailors of Catan, or Catan. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That one definitely takes uh that that one definitely takes some time. Yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, and then, and then the classic one would be Monopoly, but um, I mean. Bah. That's, that's if you that's if you want your family to become dysfunctional and you lose you know nine to ten hours of your life. Yes, exactly. <laughs> hey, I know one. Another just speaking of classic games like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, that Risk. Oh my gosh, Risk is so good. I haven't so played that in a long time. Me either. Last time I played it, I got in trouble because I started winning and I made my wife mad at me. Oh, great. Oh, man. That's that's always like a disheartening yet pleasing moment in your life. Yeah. Because <laughs> you're like, you're sorry that, that you're making them upset, but they're kind of cute when they get that kind of upset. Right? So it's, yeah, it's kind of a, yeah, it's definitely a, a conflicting time. <laughs> It's definitely conflicting. She's uh, she's making faces at me now, and it's definitely giving me conflicted feelings. Good job, good job, Faith. <laughs> um, oh, absolutely. Yeah, that one's a good one. I need to. Uh, yeah, man, I need to play that again. Yeah, we do. I need to get it, man, son. Um, I would say now, now that we've covered both extremes, I think the best, uh, all around one. Would probably, I mean, and this comes in many forms, right? It's apples to apples. Oh, it's a great game all around. 
all um, around because I mean, there's literally so many variations of it. Exactly, because you could, there's also I mean, not only is there different ways to play the original game, but there's also so many other you know quote unquote games that have been created that pretty much have the same basic um, structure. Like it's the not, same. Not pretty much, they do. Say again. I said not not pretty much. They do. It, it is the exact yeah. same structure. It, it is very much copy and paste, and then altered a little bit. <laughs> but like, those, it works. Those, yeah, exactly. Those types of those types of games are great. They're just good to play because you can do those in as little as you know twenty thirty minutes, or you can drag them on for two hours. Yeah. That is it. Just kind of all depends on your group and how y'all are feeling. Mm-hmm. Which I mean, I want to I want to give a little bit of a plug to another game that is that is kind of like that, which is Psych. Um, <laughs> we need to play this again. Um, and also for anyone who's listening, that game is amazing. Uh, y'all need to check it out. It's an app on your phone that you get. I think it was created by Ellen DeGeneres. Um, yeah, I think so. It's it's great. Because it's it's like it's like apples to apples, but you can write and or type in your own answers, and it's amazing. I mean, there's a way that there's a way to play it that's actually correct, but then at the same time, uh, we we we've always played it <laughs> differently. Um, oh yeah, so, but we we love our our version of the game, and it gets wild every time we play. <laughs> <laughs> oh, absolutely! It, I mean, it, oh, yeah, it gets very. If you very open it up with a blank slate, then you know all hell's gonna break loose. Yeah. People's minds just wander. Yes, yes. There yes. are some. There are some dark places that we find. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That is a that is a good one. That is a good one. Uh, What's up? Yeah, that is all the. That is all the questions that we have so far. Sweet. Yeah. Thank you guys for your questions. Yes. Thank you for contributing. Yeah. And uh, this, yeah, this is this is kind of a fun segment. We'll have to do this again. Yeah. So uh, for those of you listening, um, you know, share our stuff. Share it. You know, when we when we make these posts, share it around. See what else we can get. Yeah. We exactly. want to know your questions. Exactly, and yeah, we feel free to ask this question any at any moment, and then we'll, you know, try and squeeze it in when we can. No, oh, absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, what uh, what what segment do we have now? I think you had a story for us. I think so. Tell. I'm gonna try to, gonna try to make this uh, pretty concise. Yeah, you're gonna have to do it pretty quick. We're uh, running out of time. Okay, cool. So, campfire story. Um, this is also <laughs> this is also from uh, my time at RVA, um, and uh, this this story is when we uh, the the freshman and sophomore guys we we were all kind of lumped in the same Sunday school group that met on you know Sunday mornings before church, and. Uh, so they planned because, like, there's a lot of um, of the the guy. Oh my lord! There was a lot of the um, uh, you know, the the male staff that kind of you know volunteered to be our kind of leaders, right, for each group, right? And um, I see what you're doing, Flash. <laughs> <laughs> um, and. That's not exactly what I was trying to do, but I'm gonna I'm gonna full send anyway. So here we go. Yeah, yeah go ahead. Let's see, uh, failed to load. Dang, that's okay. What I was trying to do was uh, uh, try to get a fire behind us, but it started pulling up um the sp- the campfire song from SpongeBob. Um, so that's not exactly what I was trying to do, but. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. You can continue. No, you're, <laughs> you're good. Um, yeah. So the 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 male staff that um led led the Sunday school group, they planned a, a camping trip for all of us. 
So how it went down is that we all got onto, onto a couple buses and we rode down into the Rift Valley. So because the, the school is located on the mountain slope leading down into it. So we just drove down into the flat part. Um, and I think what we did first was we went to one of the um, villages. They had a project um, going on where they were building a school building. Um, but they needed help like, like forming the foundation. So uh, like we all split into groups and each of us had like a, a task to do. So um, one of us was taking these huge rocks and like using sledgehammers and banging those things into smaller rocks. They would take those smaller rocks, which I mean, the smaller rocks were like still kind of the size of like a an infant holding in your arms. Um, uh, let's not continue that analogy, but like <laughs> knowing what happens to these rocks. But um, let's. Uh, so we 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 carry the, those bigger rocks into the um, the the rectangle that we had for the foundation, and then there was another group of us that were had more slide chambers, and we were breaking those rocks into smaller and smaller and smaller pieces to get this kind of gravelly texture. Sure. Um, there's another um, group of us that were mixing cement with uh, sand, I think, um, and then another an, some, another group was like, you know, taking you know bunches of that, you know, the dry cement and put adding water to it so that it's you know so that we can get it mixing and then pour it over the you know the gravel um, for the foundation. So we um we we worked until we uh completely covered the place and was letting it dry and that was the that was the the that was it. <laughs> um nice. one funny thing one funny thing that happened while we were doing it was that there was this group of guys um I won't name them um but they were kind of uh you could say they were they were not as bush kid -y as the rest of us. Yeah. Um, For legal uh, reasons, it's a joke. Say what? <laughs> For legal reasons, this is a joke. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, so it was funny because we were swinging the... Uh, I was part of the team that was doing, swinging the sledgehammers to break the rocks into smaller rocks, like the, the into the gravel. You big um, man. Uh huh. I was a I was a wiry twig, you know, back then. That was that was a some some kind of, something else, man. Um, yeah. But uh, I remember, you know, I was swinging this stuff and everything. But then um, one of those guys was swinging it, but it was like I don't know. It like there's a way when a man swings a heavy object like that that is. You know, you look at it and be like, that's masculine. You know, this guy has some testosterone. Um, you know, that's like, you know. <laughs> There's some ways of saying this that I'm trying not to say. Um, yeah, so but, you're, you're just digging a hole there, brother. I know, but yeah, so there's that. This wasn't it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this, one of the teachers... Um, uh mr massey um uh he was our physics teacher um he was this huge dude like really bulky guy which i always thought was interesting that his name was t was mr massey um but nice. uh, yeah it was great um he's a cool dude um but he went over and took the sledgehammer from him and it's like this is how you do it and he just goes bam 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 he's just wailing at it and that was like the best thing ever um yeah but anyways that was that was kind of a highlight um for for that segment of the day after we were done with all that we uh, jumped back in the buses and we headed over to a maasai village um so if you if you're not aware of who the maasai are so they're they're like this semi nomadic african tribe um they're they're really known for their um, red uh, 
textiles. So they're, they're red fabric they wear. Um, it's kind of like a red, blue, white uh, plaid, you know, uh, blankets. Sure. Um, and well, not red, blue, and white, but I mean, it's it could be red and black too. And I mean, it's mainly red. That was that's their, like their iconic color. Um, but yeah, so yeah, there's there's a whole there's a ton of cool things about their culture that I could dive into, but I'll save that for another time. Um, oh, cool. but we we stayed with them at their at their little campsite slash mini village they had a few huts that they had made um for the women and children um and they were like situated next to this huge tree um they gave a lot of like shade so what we did is that we kind of hung around there um we set up camp which by camp i mean we rolled out huge, you know, 50 foot long tarps, um, like uh, rubber tarps or whatever, you know, tarps. And then we just had our sleeping bags on top of that and that was it. Like no tents, no coverings whatsoever. Um, and that paid off in two ways that I'll talk about soon. Um, okay. But yeah, so we set up, we set up camp like that and then... Um, it was getting to the end of the day, so it was time for dinner. Um, and so what the Maasai guys were asking us to do is to pick out our dinner. Um, so they had a, a herd of, a, a, I guess it's called a herd, a herd of goats, right? Um, but they, you know, because they're kind of uh, shepherds in a way as well. Um, so uh, they had one of the dudes go and choose the best goat out of those. Um, okay. uh, so, yeah, so she, so he he chased the dude, and uh, not not the dude, the goat. The dude <laughs> the, chased the goat. The <laughs> <laughs> he chose one of us to cook. Um, one of you. <laughs> it was Survivor from then on. Um, I'm voting Dylan for the for the dinner. Um, uh, um, he chased the goat and showed us how to to catch it, which he he got it by one of its hind legs, and for some reason that made the goat immobile. Like the goat was was not putting up a fight at all once he grabbed that. It's it's kind of the same thing when you see like cats when you pinch the you know the scruff of their neck and they just they just flop. It was the same thing. It was so okay. crazy. Huh, um, yeah. So um, uh, he pulled the goat over and he kind of put it down on its side and held its all of its le you know, legs together. He had each of us come and hold different parts of the goat. And then he asked which one of us was going to take the knife. Um, uh Disclosure warning before I move on. This is going to get a, just a tiny bit graphic, um, but it's necessary for the story. Um, so oh, uh, <laughs> so uh, one of the guys you know, volunteered to have the knife. And so what he did is that, you know, when uh, as he was going down, you know, they, they held the head out for him to because what we we're going to do is sl slice the throat and let the blood drain out. Right. So, yeah. um, so what he no, did is when, we, yeah, exactly. So what what he did is when he was going and inching the knife towards his neck, the the goat was was bleating like I mean, as in like you know, it was making its noise, um, and we swear that all of us that were crowded around that goat, we swear that we could have heard it say no, like yell out no. Um, because it was like rah, 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 no kind of thing. And we were like, oh my gosh, no. <laughs> we were freaking out. We're like, it's me. Um talking go. Yeah, a, a couple of the guys were like, mm -mm, nope, I ain't having this. And they just went away. <laughs> um and then uh yeah, so eventually the dude um uh, made his way to saw through um the neck flesh. And then uh, out came the blood. Um, but then <laughs> the Maasai had like a, 
the Monster guy had a finishing touch where he just took the head and just went whack and bent it all the way back to break the trachea. Um, and that completely killed it. Um, and the guys holding the legs could, like, you know, feel the, you know, muscles twitch from that. Um, so, yeah, so we let it, we let it kind of, the blood kind of, you know, pour onto the ground and just kind of run off and pool up until it was done. And then what they did is they took the hind legs and, and hung it up by those hind legs in this little bushy area. Um, and that was to, you know, to make sure that all the blood has, or at least, you know, a good, as much as the blood could be drained out, could be drained out. Um, and then a couple other guys were voluntold to um, get it and, you know, you know, start cutting it up and taking all the organs out. So that's just the meat carcass, right? Yep. Um, so, but what happened was, I wasn't there for it, but I heard the noise and the screams um, come from the bushes. <laughs> and what had happened is that um, they accidentally cut into the stomach, which had been inflated a little bit. And so when they did it, you could hear it, it was like a balloon pop. And <laughs> when I went over to see, they, <laughs> they were freaking out because they were kind of speckled with like little bits of blood all over them. <laughs> oh. <Aww. And laughs> so that was, oh, I'm glad I wasn't there for that. <laughs> Oh man, that would have been traumatizing. Um, but uh, yeah, so they they finished doing that, and the Masa, you know, obviously helped him because he was the only one that knew what he was doing. Um, and yeah, so they cut up everything and cooked it over the fire, and that's what we had for dinner, um, along with some you know vegetables that the ladies had gone and, and gathered. Um. So nice. it was it was a good meal. I mean, to be honest, goat is one of my least favorite meats that I've eaten. Um, I think okay. it's just if it was if it was cooked the same way as what I've had, like beef and chicken and everything, I think I would have. I, I think I would like it more. But all the times that I've had it, it's like tasted like the carcass smells. And it's just not a good experience for me, and and also most of the time when you get goat, it's tough. Which yeah. I mean, that's a good thing in their culture, and I'm sure a lot of other people prefer it to be tough, but I don't. And it was yeah, it was just <laughs> I I yeah I don't I don't necessarily like goat so far. Yeah, um, for clubs. Yeah, exactly. Um, we I, I wanted to try something like interesting, so they had. It's ears that they were cooking too. So I was like, ears. what the heck? Let's let's try it. So I, I bit the tip of its ear off, you know, after it was cooked. And I mean it was I mean it was an ear. <laughs> it, <laughs> um, it, 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 <laughs> it tasted like charred, like really, really charred meat, which I mean, that's you know, an acquired taste, I guess. Um but you know, that was something. Uh, yeah. Then that that night we spent on in our sleeping bags on the tarp, which was great because one, we got to see the unfiltered night sky above us, and that was beautiful. Oh, uh, that's pretty. Yeah, that was amazing. Um, it was, it was kind of interesting that the you know the same group of guys that I told you about earlier, they literally brought a tent, and nah. and the whole night we could hear little bits of like music from their speakers going off so they were they were pretty much glamping a little bit um at least compared yeah. to us <laughs> so that was kind of annoying um but i mean we didn't pay them any attention so we were too busy gazing up in the night sky but then also we heard some cackles from uh not too far away and Come to find out that there was a group of hyenas that were circling the place. Um, oh, cool. So that was interesting. We kept hearing them, like, you know, <laughs> kind of like, you know, giggle to each other as they were moving around. Uh, but we were just trying to stay as still as possible. Um, uh, that's not terrifying at all. I know, yeah. Um, yeah. And then we had, you know, we had dug a ditch to use as the restroom. and. That's what we did. 
Uh, next morning, we uh, had breakfast with the Mossad, which was like, I guess, I, I can't remember, honestly, what we had for breakfast. But, um, yeah. And then we did we did uh, the kind of like a ceremonial dance that the Maasai's do with them, um, which uh, the Maasai's have a dance. I don't know what it's called, honestly, but how it's done is that they all kind of stand in a circle or in a line, and they'll like, um, I'll have to I'll have to post it on TikTok and try and do it for you guys because um, it's pretty awesome especially if you're in a big group doing it. Um, but it's literally like you just kind of, you're kind of lunging forward to a beat that someone's creating, right? Because there's it's, it's all from your voices and there's no instruments. Um, and then each person goes and takes a turn to go into the middle or the front and tries to jump as high as they can with their body completely straight. Um, and that's, I mean, that's pretty much all you're doing. Um, huh. but it's it's really fun to do, especially with those That's... Maasai guys. Like they can jump high, man. It's it's awesome. Yeah, that's um, cool. Yeah, but then we uh, that was when we headed back up to uh, um to the uh, back to campus, and then that was the end of our trip. But that was a it's a it was a cool little experience. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah, I uh, uh, I tried to keep it succinct, but uh, yeah, you took up all my time. You go, you go ahead and say it there. Tell yours. It's, um, oh, so we, can... uh, we uh, are we are out of time for this evening. Okay, uh, so uh, I will close this out. Um, more or less, but first, uh, I wanted to um share a quick news story that I just saw. Um, I don't know if you've caught this yet or not, Drayden. Do you, do you see um, uh, the kidnapping uh, at the school uh, down there in uh, North Carolina? No. Yeah. Um, it's okay. He woke up, so like everything's fine. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I had to get you with the oh. with that joke. Oh. That was good. Um, I, I honestly didn't know which way it was going to go. Oh my I'm goodness. Sorry. I cannot I think resist. What made it believable was that you made it kind of local. So when you said, like, over North Carolina, I was like, oh, dang. So, like, was this like local news? Like, this is legit. Um, because at the beginning, I was like, oh, no, here we go. Here's like a joke. But then you reeled me in and then you got me. <laughs> I got you good. Um, that was awesome. Yeah, for, for those for those out there wondering um, where we get um, all of our bad dad jokes, um, we uh, or at least I, I um, consult the dad database. Oh my lord! Okay, there you go. I was waiting to see how long to get it. Dad uh, base, ha, huh. ha, huh. ha. Huh. Anyways, that was horribly awful, but at least I got you laughing. Uh, yes. So I hope uh, those of you listening enjoyed those, um, and thank you for tuning in uh, to our show. Um, I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed uh, Drayton's story. I'm going to have to share my story another time. It's not quite as interesting as that, but eh, it's there. <laughs> um, so, as always, um, we really appreciate you guys listening to us and uh, you know share our content, share our videos. Um, Find us on various socials. I don't want to steal Drayton's thunder. So, Drayton, take it away. If you like to talk to tomatoes. No, I'm just kidding. Um, if you uh, want to see more of our content, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you can be uh, uh, notified of any new episodes that come out. Um, make sure to leave a like and maybe a comment if you want to. Um, that'd be cool. Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, and also be sure to follow us on our socials. So we're on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Um, but make sure you follow TikTok and Instagram for some extra content to kind of fill in the gaps in between each episode. Um, uh, and also for like just extra things that we mention on here that, you know, we don't have the facilities to do so more in more capacity. Um, yeah. And, uh, 
make sure you share this podcast with all your friends, everybody you know. Just scream it from the rooftops, shout it to the world. Um, and uh, yeah, because word of mouth is probably the best way to spread information, anyways. Um, yeah, so thank you guys for listening, um, and we'll see you next time. See you guys. Bye.